Well, thank you very much. It's wonderful to be back here at Spark Summit. Um, last year I was with this community in Dublin, and it was a real honor to meet many of you and talk with you about the innovation that's going on where you work. When I spoke last year, I talked in some detail around the topic of energy transition and the fact that what's happening is our company is increasingly facing a wave of digital disruption that is both impacting on our core business but also creating new business models and new opportunities. As I reflected on the last 12 months, what I saw is that the narrative had shifted and that topic of energy transition had become even more important. You see, what, what we see in our industry is that the energy transition is having now a number of key facets to it. The first is that we have to become more efficient about the way in which we use energy. The second thing is that we need to decarbonize and we need to clean up the air. And the third thing is that we need to maintain the energy security for a growing population. And that's a huge challenge. It's a challenge for all of us. I would argue that it's the biggest challenge we as a society will, will face. But what is encouraging about this is that we see the potential of digital technologies to play a key role, if not the key role, in doing this. A global e-sustainability report called Smarter 2030 found that around 20% of global CO2 emissions could be reduced if we we're able to deploy digital technologies at scale. And also, that would keep us at 2015 emission levels. That's a huge change, and it could have a dramatic impact. And what I see in my company at Shell gives me a lot of confidence that we have the potential to do this. Because what's happening is that digital technology powered by AI is infusing our business from exploration to production, from refining to blending, and from our retail business to our new energies business with things like smarter charging for electric vehicles emerging. And this is exciting, and it's exciting for a number of reasons. It brings together a number of business priorities. These technologies can make us more effective and efficient. They can help us in terms of transforming the way in which we do things, making our operations more reliable, and making us the world-class investment case that we want to be for our shareholders. But not only that, they can contribute to making us more efficient in terms of the way that we use energy, and they can also make us safer. And the great news for this, this community is that the technology that supports this change is speeding up. I was delighted when I saw that they changed the title of this summit to Spark and AI, because I think that better characterizes what this community is all about. It's the computational power of Spark deployed into the cloud, enabling us to run things at scale in conjunction with the underpinning data science frameworks, the R's, the Pythons, the TensorFlows, that's actually underpinning what you see on the screen right now. And to give you an idea of how fast this is moving, last year when I spoke to you, I talked about the potential of machine vision in our thoroughly physical value chain. Let me show you how we got on. Let's roll the video. Retail is a key engine of the Shell Group. We have 30 million customers every day. Shell's retail goal for safety is linked to making sure that our customers and our staff are safe at all times. Our retail sites are exposed to safety risks ranging from vehicle heating someone, theft, smoking, also things like wrong refueling behaviors. Being able to detect those in near time and potentially intervene could be very, very beneficial for us. It's very labor intensive to analyze the hours of CCTV footage that we capture on our retail sites every day. 
with computer vision, we've developed a collection of machine learning models that can identify events of interest at the edge in near time. We can pass those into the cloud for tight processing. The Azure cloud is powering this transformation. We're now able to take a lot of the platform as a service offerings that Azure gives us, things like IoT Hub and Azure Databricks, combine them with open source technology like TensorFlow and Kafka, and bring that together into a solution quickly. What deep learning gives us is the ability to find events that might be interesting, but it also allows us to use labeled footage to train our algorithms and continuously improve. If we can leverage this technology at scale, that means making things more effective, reducing cost, and improving safety. It's a huge opportunity. So sometimes you hear marketing messages and they kind of go over your head or don't make sense. Um, and I'm a big skeptic when it comes to marketing. But I think what's happened recently is there's been a few messages that have really resonated with me, and I'm just going to talk about them. The first was a, a message around software 2.0. Uh, it was an Andrzej Kapathy blog, and, and what it talked about was the way in which the, the software development process is changing and is being increasingly infused by machine learning-based approaches. And I think that's utterly transformative. It's going to transform everyday packages like Salesforce and Microsoft Word and Excel, but it's also going to transform the way in which we do things internally and where we build software for our business. The second message I wanted to bring out was the message of this conference, which is about unifying analytics between data engineering and data science. And it's something that's been really important for our journey at Shell, bringing together those folks that are able to build the models with folks that are capable of deploying them in production-ready software to allow us to deploy at scale. And the third thing, and I talked about the physical nature of our value chain, is the ability to combine intelligent edge technology with intelligent cloud technology to enable us to deploy this into the real world. So what's the challenge? If the technology is there, if we're already getting towards the point where it can be deployed at scale, how are we going to manage this? And I think ultimately, the big challenge for us, the thing that's stopping us moving forwards, is ultimately our ability to embrace the technology quickly. The term tech intensity has been brought to my attention recently. In other words, the time it takes and the output of a company's scientific research as measured you know, as a function of its productivity. And that's a real challenge with technology like this that's moving incredibly quickly. How can we build that tech intensity to move things from concept to production in a shorter and shorter time scale? But it's also not just what we're doing, it's how we're doing it. Because we have to build a new way of working too. We have to embrace agile. We have to embrace minimum viable products. We have to embrace, embrace own, uh, product ownership. Things which are much more common in the software industry than they are in industries like ours. So we have to change. But finally, our culture has to change too. We've got to be in a position as an organization where our culture embraces these things, where learning from doing is OK, where failing is OK where we can iterate quickly and where people are willing to work with us to develop these minimum viable products that are so transformative. And so that's the challenge. But here too, I think I see a building momentum. And the momentum build I see is encouraging. We have 2,000 people in our analytics network running 40 plus events every year. We have 550 paying subscribers to our analytics lab, people who are developing algorithms just like many of you are, using the same technologies and enabling them to deploy them into production platforms. We also have 120 data scientists who support them and coach them and mentor them and help them with this. We have 100 plus projects. We have 15 of those sponsored directly from our executive committee. And we also run about 40 events a year in our analytics network, as I said, and about seven of those are hackathons where we go in and we solve a problem together with the business within a week. But that's not enough. We talk at Shell about the need to power progress together. 
What we mean by that is that ultimately our ability to transform the energy system is not dependent on one, com one company or on one institution. It's our ability to work together that's going to matter. And we are planning to launch this website in the next week. You can find much of the content today at shell.com forward slash AI. What we're doing is trying to open up. This community understands the power of openness. And I believe it's only in, the, in the, and working in an open way that we're ultimately going to be able to shape our joint energy future. And so this is our attempt to share what we're doing openly with the community, but also to invite you in as partners, as developers, as students, and to come work with us. We're, we're rolling out an AI residency program, which may be of interest to some of you, for graduates and postgraduates that are looking to gain experience working in the energy industry, working on AI projects. It's a two-year program with a number of rotations. But it's exciting about what we can do. I believe this technology can change our joint energy future. And I ask you to come with me on that journey. Let's make the future. Today, right now, you have more power at your fingertips than entire generations that came before you. Think about that. That's what technology really is. It's possibility, it's adaptability, it's capability. But in the end, it's only a tool. What's a hammer without a person who swings it? It's not about what technology can do, it's about what you can do with it. You're the voice, and it's the microphone. When you're the artist, it's the paintbrush. We are living in the future we always dreamed of. We have mixed reality that changes how we see the world and AI empowering us to change the world we see. You have more power at your fingertips than entire generations that came before you. So here's the question, what will you do with it?